Hello everybody, and welcome to another video on general character analysis. Sorry if I sound a little stuffy, I'm kind of sick. There is something I've noticed about a lot of the fandoms that original characters come from, or shall I say are made for. For the most part, this excludes creepypasta OCs, but for things like Sonic, My Little Pony, Vocaloid, and Five Nights at Freddy's, it's a whole different story. There is something that those four fandoms have in common, aside from a lot of people creating OCs for them. Now, Vocaloids kind of died down over the years, but I remember the days when you would browse the internet and you could hardly escape OCs for Vocaloid. All of these highly popular fandoms participate in something I like to call mascot theory, the theory of using color and unique traits to popularize a group of characters. So how is this going to help you when you're creating a group of original characters? Before we talk about why it works, let's take a look at how these four fandoms utilize it. Out of the four fandoms I'll be using as examples, two of them literally utilize mascots. The characters of Five Nights at Freddy's are actual mascots for the world that they are in, and Vocaloids are actual mascots to sell Krypton's product, the voice synthesizers of course. However, My Little Pony and Sonic are two fandoms that utilize this theory, but the characters aren't literally mascots. The basic formula of mascot theory is that when you're creating your group of characters, give them all one consistent trait, and then give them two other traits that vary between characters. Look at Five Nights at Freddy's. You have a yellow duck, a brown bear, a blue slash purple bunny, I think it's purple but everybody else thinks it's blue, and a red fox. All the ponies from My Little Pony are different colors and have their own cutie marks. The characters from Sonic also have their own colors and their own special abilities. Sonic being that he's fast, Amy being that she has a hammer if I remember correctly, Knuckles has Knuckles and Tails can fly. But let's look at this slightly more in depth. Like I said, there's an actual formula being used here, so let's bring that up. Looking back at Five Nights at Freddy's characters, we'll see that the consistency is that they're all animatronic, but when it comes to creating your original character, you get to pick out what animal they are and what color they are. When it comes to Vocaloid, the consistency is that they are synthetic human beings, and the variables are that you get to pick out their voice, and once again, their main color. Sonic characters. The consistency is that they're hedgehogs. Well, most of them are, or in this case, half. But sometimes deviating a little from the formula adds a bit of variety. But for the most part, they are hedgehogs or they look like hedgehogs. And that is the consistent trait. And then the variables are that you get to pick out a special skill and their color. My Little Pony. The consistency is that they're ponies. The variables are that you get to pick out their cutie mark. And of course, once again, their color. Color is an easy way to create diversity within a group of characters, but it can also make them uniform. In fact, that's exactly what mascot theory is about. Making a group of characters that are uniform, but also diverse from each other, it makes them a lot more memorable. And if you can get people to remember your characters, you are already halfway to making them successful, if not more. So, other than being memorable, why does this work? A big part of the internet belongs to original characters. Like most of the fandoms I have here for an example, you can hardly browse anywhere on DeviantArt without finding an original character for at least one of them. People creating original characters for your fandom, be it a story you make or a game, people creating OCs for them will help spread your content. I'm sure that's part of why Five Nights at Freddy's is so popular. This whole mass of animatronic OCs came flooding in, and even though you didn't know what they were for, you could tell that they were all from the same thing. And it gets people interested into finding out where are they from? What's the story here? The reason why people gravitate towards making OCs for these fandoms, most of all out of all other fandoms, is because it's simple to make an OC for these. It's a formula. You don't have to think too hard to come up with a believable looking OC for Five Nights at Freddy's, Vocaloid, Sonic, or My Little Pony. By all means, that doesn't mean that if you fit the criteria for this formula, that your original character is going to automatically be good. There's still the contextual development that you need to think about. 
But anyway, the whole point of this video is not only about making a good OC for a specific fandom, but one day when you are creating your own story, you now have a dirty little trick up your sleeve that'll possibly boost the popularity of your characters, which in return will make your content recognizable and also get people spreading your content around whether they realize it or not. When people make OCs for your work, it's like free advertising. Even Attack on Titan follows into mascot theory. Your character is going to have the brown uniform, that is consistent, but the color and shape of their hair, and what regiment they're in, will be the two variables that you'll get to choose. It's amazing how many fandoms use this thing I call mascot theory, and how many many people make original characters for them. Anyway, maybe I'm wrong, but I think I'm onto something. Thank you very much for watching, I hope this has been interesting to you, and uh, good luck with creating your original characters. See you next time.